Greetings, undercover professor here in Lake Havasu, Arizona. I am staying on Bureau of Land Management, camping out here with some friends. One of the things I get asked all the time is, what do you use when you camp? So I'm taking this opportunity. I've been out here for a month now, splitting my time between Quartzsite and Lake Havasu. I've brought some equipment out this year to test and play with and give it a long-term kick in the butt and see what works and what hasn't worked. First, let me show you what I have set up here on my RV as solar and what power stations I bring and what solar panels I use. For those not in the know who did not see my video about the Lee Time 100 amp hour minis that I put in my RV, I did do an update to this install. I now have a cutoff switch. I have a couple of bus bars down in there and I also have a fuse. And this is also a fused bus bar as well. So I have tons of fuses in here. Everyone was worried about my safety and saying that I wired it wrong. I do have this all wired correctly. It's very safe. There's no issues here. I don't worry about any kind of problems. It has been working fantastic. Now this would be considered a B plus or a small C RV. The lead time batteries have been working fantastic. Now they do use pouch cells. There are a lot of people are complaining, oh, they have pouch cells. Well, that's how they make them so small. I have cycled them at least 30 times now. I've never had any kind of issues whatsoever with the amount of power that I get out of them. They, they always do what they're supposed to do. I'm gonna try to find some way to squeeze some more of them in here. The problem is my battery compartment's full. That's gonna be a future project. So as you can see, I have 300 amp hours built into my RV. Now let's go up on the roof and show you what I'm using for solar. Okay, we're up here on the roof and I do have three 200 watt Bouge RV Yuma SIGS panels. So 600 watts total. Now this panel here gets shaded pretty much all day, every day. So it doesn't output nearly as much as these other two, which for the most part don't get shaded. I can probably fit two 100 watt SIGs back here for a total of 800. So I have some additional ground panels. Let me show you those. Now for me, 600 watts on the roof is nowhere near enough power. So I actually brought two 400 watt folding solar panels with me. First up is the 400 watt Blue Eddy folding solar panel. This is the PV420. This thing is fantastic. It is nice and weighty and it has these metal legs on it, which keep it up. And let me tell you, with exception of one windstorm we've had here, which just flapped up one side, this thing has been a super trooper and standing up to winds gusting up to 40 miles an hour. It's just very, very solid. It outputs usually around 330 to 350 watts, which is pretty good, seeing that I'm only at about 800 feet sea level. And originally the game plan was to compare the Blue Eddy 400 watt panel with the EcoFlow 400 watt panel. But some friends of mine were doing some work at my house. They lost my EcoFlow panel. I could not find it. So I had to substitute with the Montec 400 watt panel. And let me tell you, there's a night and day difference in the quality. So here is the Montec 400 watts folding solar panel, which is designed to be used with their cases. Now, you can tell already there's a big difference in quality because these are pretty flexy and very thin. The legs on them are very pathetic. It barely holds up under its own weight. It does have this tent pole that you're supposed to put through, which snapped in several places. Uh, this folding solar panel while outputting about 300 watts to 320 most of the time, so that power output is good. The problem is the slightest gust of wind knocks it over. So it's been flipped over many times. You can see the surface has been scratched up pretty badly. It's still outputting just fine, but as long as there's no wind, it works. The problem is any kind of wind knocks it over. So I am constantly pretty much every day, sometimes several times a day, flipping this thing back up. And it's also much more difficult to aim because it is so flimsy. It's got the four legs in the back instead of the three like the Blue Eddy. And therefore it's just more difficult to even move. It is lighter, it's a lot lighter, which is good for storage and picking it up. But compared to this Blue Eddy panel, I mean, these boards are heavy duty and they hold up to the wind, hold up to the sun. You don't see any scratches on the surface. Now this one has fallen over a few times in the past. I've actually camped with this Blue Eddy panel for three years now and it has basically been a super trooper. I absolutely love this Blue Eddy panel, the Montec panel not so much. It has 
provided me with the power I've needed. So I can't complain too much. Now the Montec panel does work pretty good flat on the ground. I'll get about 250 out of 400 watts out of it, which isn't bad if it's laying flat. But if I have it propped up right towards the sun, like I said, it's about 300 to 320 on average. And that's over the last 30 days. Bloody outputs a little bit more power. This is closer to 330 to 350. So I've had it hit actually 360, 370 a couple times. And that's here in the low desert. This is the first sunny day we've had in quite a while. So you're probably wondering, okay, I have two 400 watt ground panels plus the 600 watts on the roof. How do I plug the ground panels in at the same time as the roof panels? Well, the answer to that is a second solar controller. So this RV comes with, like I said, a Go Power or a Zamp connector. It just comes with a standard connector like this. And then I have this running to a Renogy 20 amp controller, which is enough to handle that 400 watt panel. I have the MC4 plugs going out through the solar panel. And then I have the positive and negative coming up here to the Go Power slash Zamp connector. Now Go Power and Zamp do the exact same thing. This is just a raw connection that goes to your battery. There is no solar controller built into your RV. This allows you to hook in a solar panel with a solar controller or put your own solar controller in like I did and I just tuck this in underneath the RV to keep it dry when it rains. Now you notice I said a single 400 watt panel, but I have two 400 watt panels. What am I using the second 400 watt panel for? Yep, the second one is coming to a Blue Eddy AC200L. I decided to camp with this for the first time to see what its capabilities were. So why the AC200L? Well, it fits the space for one. It's two kilowatts or the 2400 watt inverter. So I can run anything in my RV on it, plus it has a 30 amp RV hookup on it, and it can take a lot of solar and it charges very quickly with my generator if I need to charge it with my generator. The AC200 Max, on the other hand, which is what I used to camp with, is still great, but it doesn't have built-in fast charging for my generator. It uses an external brick, which I can't stand, especially when I need to fast charge off my generator. So I decided to go ahead and bring the 200L to be a little bit different. So how am I hooking up this Blue Eddy? Well, I have my shore power cable going to the Blue Eddy, and it's hooking up to the 30 amp output of the inverter. And then for solar, I am running my solar cables under the RV over to the solar panel. So why in the world would I be using a Blue Eddy when I have a house system? Well, remember how I told you that I don't have enough batteries in this thing? This is only 300 amp hours. I decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split my loads. So my AC loads are gonna run off the Blue Eddy being charged directly with its own solar. And then the rest of my loads, all my 12 volt stuff and my Starlink, I'm gonna run off my house batteries. I have one 400 watt ground panel for my house batteries plus the 600 watts on the roof. So it's a thousand watts for my house batteries. Then I have a separate 400 watt panel going to the Blue Eddy and that runs all my AC loads. Since I don't have a lot of AC loads in here, basically I'm cooking with an air fryer, microwave, and I run a TV at night. That's, and then my laptop occasionally, but most of that's being powered from uh, my house batteries. And the nice thing about the Blue Eddy is that I can just turn off the inverter remotely using the app. So I don't have to get out and push any buttons. I can do it within 30 feet or so of my RV. I can just turn the inverter on and off and it automatically turns itself off after an hour if I'm not using any power in case I forget. So actually this combination of house batteries and Blue Eddy has made my life much easier out here in the desert. If I either rely solely on the 300 amp hours in here and the solar I have on my roof, I'd be running my generator almost every single day and I hate running my generator. This is a propane generator, so it doesn't smell, but it's still loud and noisy. It vibrates the whole RV and it uses propane. I have a limited amount of propane. I don't want to break the camp and go get propane all the time. So I was like, oh, let's bring a couple uh, folding panels and see if we can supplement with a Blue Eddy. And it actually has worked out fantastic. So there is room in your life for a Blue Eddy or an EcoFlow power station while you're camping, even if you do have your own solar power system set up in your RV. Okay, next let me show you the inverter and solar controller setup. All right, we're now under my kitchen sink. I do have a Victron 15070 controller in here. Now the wires that are made for this RV, where they come from the roof, it's a solar prep package, terminate under the sink. So I'm assuming this is where the factory would have put their solar controller, or I should say the aftermarket company puts their solar controller. Uh, typically it would be a Go Power. Now I wasn't gonna waste my money on that garbage. Of course, I'm gonna get the best, which is Victron. And I do love their app. 
apps. Now, one of the best things about the Victron is that it actually does communicate with the shunt. So I can tell my solar controller, don't charge the batteries below freezing because those lead time 100 amp hour minis don't actually have low temperature sensors on them. So I can tell my solar controller, do not charge below freezing. The two of them talk together wirelessly. So it's basically a non-issue. Batteries just simply won't charge below zero C. And yes, I've tested it. It works perfectly fine. Uh, let me show you what else I got going on here. So besides the Victron controller itself, I do have a solar shutoff switch. So this allows me to turn the solar off from the roof before it comes into the controller. Now, why would I have a switch to shut off my solar? Well, in case I ever want to work on something, I can just shut off the solar. I don't have to worry about pushing 90 volts or whatever through the system. Also, you're never supposed to run your solar controller without a battery hooked up. Now, that's one way to quickly burn up your solar controller if you have solar plugged into it with no battery. So this allows me to shut off the main system batteries and the solar, which I'd shut off the solar first, then the main batteries, and then I'd turn on the main batteries, and then turn on the solar. That's the order you're supposed to do it. So it's a safety thing, and it's to prevent my Victron from getting burned up. Now, the Astute have noticed that I have my Starlink router in here. Why in the heck do I have my Starlink router in here? And that's because back here in this cubby, I have a 300 watt Best Tech Pure Sign Inverter, and that's because I have it wired into the same 12 volt that runs the Victron controller. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm running my Starlink off of a tiny 300 watt inverter, and I do that so it saves power. Because again, the larger the inverter, the more idle consumption it uses. So I just use a tiny 300 watt inverter to run my Starlink, which runs 24 hours a day. Saves me quite a bit of power because I can turn my main inverter off and this little inverter runs all the time, regardless of if I have the in main inverter on or not. And this setup allows me to run my Starlink off my house batteries 24 hours a day. Okay, the next thing you're gonna notice is I do have a Renogy panel here for my solar controller. Now this is the Victron shunt battery monitor, you can see I'm at 100% charge today, which is the first time in quite a while I've had 100% charge. Now this Renji panel allows me to turn on and off my house inverter, which let me show you where I put it. So you can't really see too much of it in here. You can kind of see it. I have it under my passenger seat. This is a Renogy 2000 watt. This is their new smaller inverter. If you saw my recent YouTube short where I actually take the inverter apart and disable the GFCI, I had to do that because I have multiple GFCIs already in the RV, and that was a problem because you're not supposed to stack them, so the inverter kept tripping over and over again no matter what I did. I have a video on how to take it apart and disable it if you're interested. I do have the inverter here under the passenger seat, so it's in a good place. It gets plenty of ventilation. I can remove this top panel if I need to, but now I generally don't run my inverter for very long anyway. Usually it's just a couple minutes for the microwave, then I'll turn it back off because, again, I got my Starlink running on a separate inverter, so I don't need to leave my inverter on day and night and waste a bunch of power because when you only have 300 amp hours of lithium, for me, that's about half of what I need. So I have to conserve as much as possible. And last but not least, this is my setup for doing work that I'm not supposed to be doing because I'm on vacation. But let me show you what power stations I actually use in here for various tasks. So I'm using this Jackery 1000 Pro to charge my laptop. Now, the reason why I brought the Pro with me is because it charges using one of these cables. So I could run my generator and charge it up directly off my generator. And that was an originally the idea. Now I brought this Blue Eddy AC70 to do the same thing, basically a smaller, more portable version of the Jackery. And again, I just wanted to kind of test this in the field to see how well it worked. It also has dual 100 watt power delivery, just like the Jackery has dual 100 watt power delivery. And my laptop does actually take 100 watt power delivery. Right there in my laptop, I can plug it in and charge my laptop at 100 watts. So that's why I chose these two. Now I'm gonna tell you something about the Jackery and why I'm not gonna bring it again on a camping trip. So I'm not too thrilled about the Jackery 1000 Pro because first it doesn't have an app, so I cannot adjust the speed of charging, which is important when you're trying to charge off of a propane generator. Because I don't wanna run it any longer than I have to, and since it only charges at 700 watts, it takes an hour and a half. I have to run my generator an hour and a half to charge the thing up, and, and I hate running my generator. I don't wanna do it if I don't have to. And trying to use any of these solar panels I brought with me are impossible because the voltage is too high and I need a bunch of adapters. And just put it this way, Jackery's behind in its game. Um, it's a pain in my butt. I'm not gonna use the Jackery anymore. It basically, it was just to charge off my generator in emergency situations, but I realized that I use it a lot more than I thought I would because my house batteries are so small. I ended up using my Jackery a lot to run my laptop. So, and I've been running my laptop every day for multiple hours a night, and it takes quite a bit of power. Now, the Blue ID AC70 is 
much better product, I think. Uh, it's a smaller battery. It makes it lighter. It's easier to run around with. It also has three settings, um, silent, standard, and turbo. I usually charge it in turbo, which is I think 1.2 kilowatts. So it charges in like 45 minutes. It's a, it's a much bigger difference if I need to charge it off my generator. I don't have to run my generator as long. I don't have to burn up as much propane. And then I don't have to see with my butt vibrating for multiple hours on end. So last but not least is the EB3A. Now I only usually bring this to charge my phone, which I do have up at the top. It's got the wireless charging pad. The older Blue Eddies have the wireless charging pad up top. The new ones don't seem to support that. They're trying to cut some costs, but one of my favorite features about the EB3A is the wireless charging pad and the fact that it does have USB-C 100 watt power delivery. So this has a little tiny battery. It's only 268 watt hours, so I only get maybe one charge off my laptop. So hopefully this gave you information about what I use for camping. Now I've boondocked for four weeks in this configuration. I've got one more week to go before I go home. So hopefully this answered your questions as to what I use for when I boondock. Now, this is the longest boondocking that I do during the year. It's usually about four or five weeks. So I really do need to be prepared. I need to have lots of power, lots of solar to make it, especially past those days where there's not a lot of sun. And like I said, I don't like to use my generator unless it's absolutely necessary. I think I put six or seven, maybe eight hours on it in the past month. We had some pretty bad days of heavy clouds and rain. I didn't have much of a choice. So that's that. Um, you guys have been asking me over and over again, what do I suggest? What do I use for camping? Now in the future, I'm going to bring some EcoFlow products. I didn't this time, but I will in the future. One of the issues I had with EcoFlow is that they're bigger products. The AC outlets are on the back. You have to turn them around to plug them in, turn them around to turn the buttons on. It's a pain in the, in the backside. It's just annoying. And yeah, I know you can use the app, but I don't want to necessarily open an app just to turn on the inverter. The Blue Eddies I find a lot easier because their outlets are on the front. You know, same with the Jackeries. That's just a personal preference while camping. Obviously, if it's at home in a fixed position, it doesn't matter. And I will have links in the description of this video below if you're interested in checking out anything that I showed you today. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.